I simply don't accept that we were complacent. The big problem is that volcanoes are notoriously difficult to predict. Well, look at Mount St. Helens. In 1980, it erupted horizontally rather than vertically, took us completely by surprise, killed 57 people, including one of our own guys. Even with the best equipment in the world, and we had the very best, by the way, even then, you still got two big blind spots, timing and scale. You can't tell when, and you can't tell how big. stations, we establish an exact location. denying the possibility of a super eruption. Norris, as I said to you before, Miss Chin, Norris was a hydrothermal event and by no means a surefire indicator of volcanic activity. And certainly not on the scale that you are referring to. Nevertheless, we have issued a code red warning because we don't take these things lightly. Yes. But you Daddy. Yeah. He's getting famous. But you can't rule out a super eruption, can you? Looks hard. Likely as an asteroid strike, according to some experts. And half as unlikely as being struck by lightning, Miss Chin. And how many of us lose sleep over that? That's all the time we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Too much politics, not enough science. Okay, are we ready to run this simulation? Let's yep. do it. All right. So what I'd like to do is run through a couple of potential scenarios here. Hey, hey, Rick, we've got another quake just over a mile south of Norris. Okay, how big? 1.9. 1.9, okay. Now, this anomaly that we've discovered near Norris, now this could be water and gas as we know, or worst case scenario, it could be a new pod of uh, eruptible magma. So I want to concentrate our simulations around this area and see what uh, the potential damage could be, okay? So, option number one. Let's say that uh, we've got one cubic kilometer of eruptible magma. Okay, and uh, drop it. Run it. No eruption. Based on option one, seems not. All right, then let's keep all the other parameters the same, uh, but increase it by five, so we'll make it five cubic kilometers. Okay, how big is this? Moderate BEI two. Back to in duration. Over approximately three days. With that amount of magma, it could have been a lot bigger. Okay, let's increase it by another factor of five and uh, make it 25 cubic kilometers. Okay. Whenever you're ready. BEI 5, Mount St. Helen size. Right. So, ten times more magma, a thousand times more eruption. Potentially. Okay, so let's increase it by another factor of five 
and make it 125 cubic kilometers. This time, let's just let's just run it this time just from the hydrothermal blast. Sure. The EI-5 again. Okay. The EI-5 again. What happened? Computer glitch. Okay, tell me what we just saw. All right. All right, I'll say it. If we have a reservoir of meltdown there that's larger than 125 cubic kilometers, then this model is telling us that even a moderate eruption near Norris could destabilize the rest of the chamber and trigger a... Uh... VEI-8. Super eruption. <laughs> That's great, great. And if frogs had wings, then they wouldn't bump their little green asses hopping around, eh? <laughs> if, if there was a pocket of melt over 125 cubic kilometers, then a possible eruption at Norris may trigger further eruptions, which maybe, just possibly, could register as VEI-8. Brilliant, great. Jesus, you're letting yourself be spooked by a, by, by a video game. Oh! Just because there's a lot of magma down there doesn't mean that it's all going to come out. Big magma chambers can produce big eruptions, but they can also produce small ones. The real question is, what is the trigger that can set an eruption off? An earthquake, perhaps opening up the roof of the chamber and allowing the magma to escape. But you see, many of the earthquakes at Yellowstone over the previous 600,000 years could have done that. And so far, not one had. To find out what was really going on at Yellowstone, we needed better images of the chamber. We also needed to see what was going on at ground level. We needed to be there. How close are we here from Norris? Uh, 25 kilometers as per handbook rules. Exciting, huh? Oh, yeah. Very exciting. With any luck, it'll erupt while we have such a good view. Nancy, you better get up here right away. Okay. So where's this uplift concentrated? Here. Firehole River Basin. Some males from Norris. <laughs> Hang on. The question is, is this rising magma or is this groundwater? I could make a plausible case of either. Yeah, I know you could. Another 2.2 to the northeast of Norris. That's the third today. So, we got another swarm coming. I need the SRI data for the entire park. Could we get more instrumentation down at Firehole River Basin? Uh, if we steal them from elsewhere. Well, I'll steal them. The ground uplift, earthquake swarms, rising levels of carbon dioxide, and the, the hydrothermal event. All of these things can be indicators of volcanic activity. Equally, they can mean nothing. We close the park to be safe. But that didn't stop the hordes of people coming to check it out for themselves. Hey, Rick! Rick! Hey! <sighs> Miss Chin. Can we come in? Look, I've got to cover this one way or another. It's my job. Okay. Do you want to cover this? 